Good evening, everybody. This is Pastor Brennan coming to you live from Siloam Springs, Arkansas, with another Fishers of Men video broadcast, and it's good to be here today. Um, I know that I said on Facebook I was going to postpone the video uh, tonight and do it tomorrow and do tomorrow's video on Saturday, but I've been thinking about it, and I just kind of feel like the Lord's just sort of pressing me to do it tonight and not delay it. And just, you know, <clears throat> trying to uh, be the man of my word, as, as you will. And, and, and to, you know, be able to be committed to the days that I say that I'm going to do it and not just postpone it. So, uh, pray for me that, you know, God will continue just giving me grace and strength to to be faithful in these days that I say I'm going to do my videos. And um, speaking of which, <coughs> speaking of videos, <clears throat> I guess I want to show you all something. <clears throat> something that came in this week. And um, I had bought cards to help um, promote the Sermon Audio Ministry. And I'm going to show it to you. And if anyone can see it, it's uh, Fishers of Men, and it has my title, it, it has my name on it, it has my P.O. box on there, it has my email, but it also has the Sermon Audio, uh, the Sermon Audio link, it has the Sermon Audio URL, so that you can just simply go on and take a look at it. And um, I made these, I had these cards made up so that I can, you know pass them out accordingly to the Lord and you know I, I gave them to my family of course I you know with with me you know my family is a mission field too so I made these cards and it's Fishers of Men Ministries and I I, I liked how they I liked how it turned out because it has a, like, a, like a little boat and it has like a, like a sunset feel to it <clears throat> so that's the fr that's the front side. Now on the back, on the back here, <clears throat> it uh, it says Fishers of Men Ministries, and the title of the the the, the verse of it comes from Matthew four nineteen, and and it's Jesus and Jesus says, and he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And that's kind of like the the kind of like the theme verse of my whole ministry. Um, and then I have the broadcast times. I've got Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. <clears throat> and um, Monday is Fishers of Men. And Tuesday is Pastor Brandon Live. Thursday is Fishers of Men. And then Friday is Pastor Brandon Live. And so I just thought I would share that with you. Um, boy, if you'd like, I, I don't know. I have to pray about this. But if anybody would like some of these cards to pass out, uh, let me know. I'll, I'll see what I can do to get them, get some in the mail. However, I'm very limited. I only bought, only got about a hundred or so. So there's only going to be so much I'm going to be able to hand out to people. <clears throat> so I have to pray on it. But if, if, but um, if the Lord willing, if anybody would like some, you know, just one for themselves and some to hand out to people, uh, they are more than feel free to let me know, and I will do what I can to mail them out to you <coughs> and that way you can just share them with people tell them about me a little bit you get to tell them um, <clears throat> just just tell them a little bit about the ministry and stuff like that tell them about Facebook uh, tell them about YouTube and sermon audio so just just something to keep in mind um, <clears throat> so I just wanted to share that with you today uh, what else uh, let's go ahead and do some prayer requests and why is my my computer is kind of going nuts on me? Well, actually, it's not nuts. It's just it's just it's just kind of dim. Uh, is it gonna work now? There we go. I, ha I just had to plug it in. Uh, so let's do some prayer requests. Uh, right off the bat, let's um, please keep a fellow sister in prayer uh, for her and her mother, uh, specifically for, uh, for strength for her. Uh, she has a lot going on. Like myself, I have a lot going on. So much going on with whole bunch of other things that's not even kind of close or compared but I do have a lot going on but she's probably got a lot more going on than I do so please keep her in prayer pray for strength for her please pray for her mother uh 
pray that, uh, you know, pray, uh, you know, that this fellow sister will, you know, God, that God will send a fellow, send someone to help this fellow sister out. Uh, but also please pray for strength for her pray uh, and and any other prayer requests that she might have uh we'll you know lift those up to her as well um as i always say brother joey doesn't mind me saying his name because he's not shy so <clears throat> he's given me permission to say his name so brother joey he has pain and the pain is kind of kind of growing right now so please keep him in prayer uh please pray for me pray for these videos pray for the ministry pray for uh that god will take these and do with it as he wills um pray for my financial situation please and when i say that i got issues with unemployment um <clears throat> it's, just, it's not just me it's actually my mother too my mother and i both have issues with unemployment it is a lot of ridiculous stuff, but anyways, I'm not going to get into that um, too much, but uh, please pray for us. Please pray for uh, the Sermon Audio Ministry. Pray that God will take those videos and pray that, and, and, and here's the thing. I had, a, I had a good pastor friend of mine. I spoke to him, um, and uh, he had mentioned on how, you know, um, you know, Sermon Audio is really for like, you know, the, like believers and stuff like that. And so, you know, <clears throat> the whole goal, what, I, I'm, what I'm hoping is that for those of you that are, that either listen or watch on Sermon Audio, don't be afraid to take these messages, if led by the Lord, and share them with lost people. Okay? As a matter of fact, I'm going to commission you I want to commission and, 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 and challenge you that for those who are watching on Sermon Audio, please, 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 if you've got lost family members or lost friends that need to hear the gospel, um, I don't mind you sharing my videos with them. Okay, So please, if you do feel led by the Holy Ghost to share my videos, uh, please do so. and Because um, I want these videos to get out. I don't want them to be in words. I want them out. <clears throat> and I want them to go out in the most darkest and sinister places that people might see a light and might come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's going to be my challenge for you guys. That's also going to be my challenge for you guys on Facebook. And that's going to be my challenge for you guys on YouTube. And I say that because there's, apparently there's three branches of this ministry so far. That God has enabled and allowed me to, to, to go about doing this. And um, first it was Facebook and YouTube. And now I feel like God has sort of allowed me to have another branch <clears throat> and with this. So please pray for, you know, please pray for all three of those. Um, I, I want the lost need to hear the word of God. Amen. We need to get the word of God to the lost. <clears throat> Amen. So, um, other than that, I don't have any other prayer requests. If you do have prayer requests, please feel free to share them. Um, and, um, you know, that's that's going to be about it for that. I know I'm rambling on and on and on, and I apologize. Um, but I'm just going to share the gospel anyways. Uh, anyways, uh, today uh, we are going to get back into our Hebrews 11 series and it is our faith series and I believe if I have it correctly if you see on the screen uh, I think this is part number eight so we're kind of moving along and it's another it's another fairly decent length series excuse me um, so we're gonna be talking about Jacob tonight and uh, we're gonna <coughs> I'm going to talk about how Jacob blessed both of Joseph's sons, but we're also going to take a look at tonight how by faith, Jacob, by faith, prophesied by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost to the son, to his sons. Okay? What do I mean by that? Well, he, 
Jacob had 12 sons. He had four, four wives, and each of them bore him sons. And so Jacob, I mean, Jacob had a lot of sons, okay? <clears throat> and, that's gonna, and that is the beginning of Israel, which is why his name is Israel, okay? Jacob's name is Israel. And Jacob had a name change. Now, for those of you that don't know the significance of that, usually almost always, when somebody has a name change in the Bible, it usually signifies salvation. Okay? God changed Jacob's name to Israel. Okay? Now, here's why I say that. Okay? Uh, let me... Let me pull up my Bible software, and I'm going to show you from Scripture as to why a name change will usually signify salvation. <coughs> now, how many of you guys are familiar with the passage in Revelation about how Jesus promises a white stone? Okay, a white stone. Let's see here. White stone. By the way, white stone is only mentioned one time in the Bible. Isn't that interesting? It is only mentioned one time. Okay? Actually, hang on a second. Let me see if there's multiple times. Nope, it's just one time. And number one is usually the beginning. Isn't that interesting? One is the beginning. White stone is mentioned one time. Let's read the passage. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Revelation chapter 2, verse 17. <clears throat> Revelation 2, 17. Jesus says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone and in that and in the stone a new name written which no man knoweth saving he that receive it so a promise that you can stand on is that when we go home you're going to get a white stone and on that white stone is going to be a new name. Okay? There's a name change. Okay? You will have a new name when you go home. You will have a new name. And by the way, no one knows it but you. <coughs> okay? Now, there's a name change. And we see that. That is signifying salvation. It's all those who are saved, all those who overcome, will have a white stone with a new name on it. It is written one time. Okay, white stone is only mentioned once, and once is in the beginning. Think about this. A new name is a new beginning, isn't it? When you get that new name, when you go home, it's going to be the beginning of something greater isn't it this life is like a uh, a prequel kind of <clears throat> this life is like a prequel okay it's like a prelude but when you go home when you go home to be with the lord you're going to get a you're going to get a white stone with a new name on it that's going to be the beginning of something bigger and that beginning of something bigger is going to be with the Lord for all eternity. And for all eternity, you we will get to praise and worship His holy name. And we get to be with our Father. Amen. <clears throat> we get to be with our Holy Father. And no, I did not mean Pope Francis, the talking Pope. That's a... 
There's only one Holy Father, and that is Jesus Christ, who is God the Father. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. These three are one. Jesus Christ is the only Holy Father we have. Pope Francis is a sinner just like the rest of us. A sinner who needs to be saved. If people don't like that, I'm sorry. I don't care. Because I defy the Pope and all his laws. I don't like the Pope. When I say that is I don't like the fact that of what he's doing. Okay? He is not the vicar of Christ. I'm sorry. I, I'm getting way off. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you something. Maybe tomorrow, if the Lord willing, on the Pastor Brandon Live, I might talk about Catholicism, and I'll probably get into uh, what Pope Francis, and I, and I call him Pope Francis the fascist pope because he is a fascist and socialist being is what he is i don't like what he's doing and he's a he's a heretic and he he needs jesus christ amen that's what he needs but anyways the point i'm trying to make <clears throat> is that a white stone okay is that when we go home we will receive a white stone okay and with that it will be a, be a new it will be a new beginning for us why because we get to spend all eternity with our father amen now i could go on and on and on about that but i don't want to because i actually want to get into jacob okay so but how does this correlate to jacob might you ask well it's a good question because the answer is jacob had a name change god changed his name from jacob to israel Okay, <clears throat> so I was basically taking Revelation 2.17 to making a case as to why a name change typically, typically um, <clears throat> is a stance for, is, is salvation, okay? Now, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Hebrews, Hebrews 11, <clears throat> hang on, I'm going to get it, you got I had some Subway tonight, so I'm going to just get a drink of my soda here real quick. Ugh. All right. Let's continue. Hebrews 11. We're going to start in uh, Hebrews 11, and we're going to read in verse 21. <clears throat> it says, By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, when he was a dying uh, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning upon the top of his staff. Amen. Now Jacob did all this in faith. <clears throat> and when you read in this, when you read this, Jacob was really at the, he was real he was dying. He was near he was at the end and near of his life. He was he was blind, you know, his eyes were dim, means he was going blind, he was of old age. And uh, his days, his days were shortening, okay? His days were coming to a close, okay? Now, I want you guys to turn, <coughs> I want you guys to turn with me to Genesis chapter 48, Genesis 48. Now, I might explain some things along the way, but for, for like the, maybe the next few lessons, I'm really going to really mainly read scripture, that's, that's basically what I want to do. Just read scripture. <clears throat> and I might, I might explain some things, but really I'm just going to read scripture. Amen? So, uh, Genesis chapter 48. We're going to start in verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that one told Joseph, Behold, thy father is sick. And he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, 
And one told Jacob and said, Behold, thy son Joseph cometh unto thee. And Israel straightened himself and sat upon the bed. And Jacob said unto Joseph, God Almighty appeared unto me at Lutz in the land of Canaan and blessed me. And he said unto me, Behold, I will make thee fruitful and multiply, and I will make thee make of thee a multitude of people, and will give this land to thy seed after thee for an everlasting possession. <clears throat> now listen. Okay, Jacob. Okay, God. So what we see here is God is telling Jacob what he's going to do for his seed. Okay, and and what he was going to do is the same promise that he made with Abraham and with Isaac. Now he's establishing it with Jacob. Okay, now what is the land of Canaan? What is what is this land that they would have for an everlasting possession? Okay, this land is Israel. <clears throat> now, I have to make something very clear, okay? It is the Jews, okay, it is the Jews that inherit the actual land, the actual physical land of Israel, okay? It's the Jews, it's only the Jews that inherit that physical land. Now, um... I did a message, okay, and actually I want you guys to go and check this out because I think this ties in perfectly to what I what I just what I just recently preached on, okay? <clears throat> I preached on I preached a message called Son of David and Son of Abraham. And that message came straight from Matthew 1 1. And what we learned and took a look at why Jesus was called Son of Abraham. <clears throat> Because son of Abraham describes the relationship between Jesus Christ and him being the heir to Israel. Okay, that is why he is called son of Abraham. Because God promised, as we just seen right here, is that God promised Abraham the land for an everlasting possession. And so Jesus Christ is the rightful heir to the land of Israel. Amen? He may not be the physical seed of Abraham, but he was born in that lineage of Abraham. <clears throat> he was also born in the lineage of David. It is possible to be born through a lineage and not be the physical seed. I can't explain that to you. Actually, I could, but not in my sense. Okay? It is possible because Jesus Christ was conceived by the power of the Holy Ghost. And because he was not the actual physical seed of David, he was still born through the lineage of David and therefore was born in the lineage of Abraham. Therefore, Jesus Christ was the rightful heir to two things. The throne of David. Okay? His kingdom shall be an everlasting kingdom. And the heir to the land of Israel. Amen? God owns the rights to Israel. By the way, <clears throat> that should show you that God is not done with Israel. He's not. He's not done with his land. He's not done with Israel. If he was, why is he called the son of David? Why is he called the son of Abraham if he was done with Israel? See, this is why the whole replacement theology, the bo that bogus replacement theology of how the church replaced Israel makes no sense. It does not line up biblically. Why? Because Jesus Christ is the son of David and he is the son of Abraham. Amen? So, <clears throat> we see that, that Jacob is reiterating that promise of the land to 
the two sons. Okay, he's also going to relate that promise to his son, uh, to uh, not to his two sons, but to Joseph's two sons. They're they're his grandkids. Okay, he's a grandpa. Okay, Jake Israel is a grandpa. Okay, he's a grandpa. Okay, okay, so we see that this is very important. That this land is very important. By the way, which should tell you, don't you ever mess with the land of Israel. You mess with the land of Israel, God will get you back in return the way he will. You don't mess with Israel. America, I hope you're listening to that. You, we as a nation should not mess with Israel. And all you other nations that think that you can get away with messing with Israel, I guarantee you, you will fail. Because <clears throat> you try to mess with is Israel, <clears throat> you, God will deal with you the way he will. Now, here's why I mention this. The Jews are only are the ones who inherit that land. Okay? The application to this, okay, heaven is New Jerusalem. Okay? The Jews, the actual Jews inherit the land. But there is an application, there is an application to this for Gentiles. And the application to it is that when we when we when we as born again people either die or when we get translated out of here, we will be able to inherit eternal life. Amen. We will be able to inherit eternal life through through Jesus Christ. Okay? Us Gentiles won't be won't inherit the land, the physical land of Israel. We we will inherit eternal life, which is in New Jerusalem. But we actually won't inherit the actual physical land. That's for the Jews. Does that make sense with everybody? I, I don't want to complicate things. <clears throat> but I want to be able to take some time and explain this to help you to understand that, the, that this land that Jacob is talking about is a promise through Abraham. Amen? And I'm also trying to tie in how Jesus is called the son of Abraham because it fits. Amen? Jesus Christ is the heir to Israel. Amen? So let's continue on reading. I, I spoke a lot there. Let's go ahead and continue on. <clears throat> and, and said unto me, Behold, I will make thee fruitful and multiply thee. I will make of thee multitude of people and will give this land to thy seed after thee for an everlasting possession. And now thy two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, which were born unto thee in the land of Egypt, before uh, before I came unto thee into Egypt, are mine, as Reuben and Simeon, they shall be mine. And thy, and thy issue, which thou be, begettest after them, shall be thine, and shall be called after the name of their brethren and their inheritance. And as for me, when I came from Padan, Rachel died by me in the land of Canaan, in the way when yet there was but a little way to come unto Ephrath, um, Ephrath, 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 I can't even pronounce that, um, Ephrath. And I buried her, I buried there, I buried her there in, in the way of Ephrath. The same is Bethlehem. The same is Bethlehem. Check this out. Check this out, you guys. Where was David born? David was born in Bethlehem. Let's go check that out real quick. Bethlehem. Actually, it would be Bethlehem, uh, Judah. And... <clears throat> Let's go... Okay, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 12. Now David was the son of that Ephrathite of Bethlehem, Judah, whose name was Jesse. And he had eight sons. 
That's interesting. Eight. Eight sons. Um, and the man went among men for an old man in the days of Saul. Let's see here. So, yeah, okay, okay, so there we go. So David was born in Bethlehem. By the way, here, here's, here's something really interesting that I didn't know until I actually learned this. But did you know uh, Bethlehem, if I, if I have this correct, Bethlehem means house of bread. Okay? Where was Jesus born? Jesus was born in Bethlehem. So, Bethlehem means house of bread. Jesus is whom? He's the bread of life. Isn't he? Bread of life born in the house of bread. That's amazing, ain't it? That's pretty neat. <clears throat> but anyways, um... I kind of went off course there, but let's uh, let me get back on the course and we'll, we'll go ahead. Um, okay, no, okay. So uh, Ephrath, the same as Bethlehem, and Israel beheld Joseph's son and said, "Who are these?" And Joseph said unto his father, "They, they are my sons, whom God hath given me in this place." And he said, Bring them, I pray thee, unto me, and I will bless them. Now the eyes of Israel were dim for age, so that he could not see. So we see that, by the way, it doesn't say Jacob anymore, does it? It says, Now the eyes of Israel. You know who Israel is? Israel is, Israel is Jacob. He just had a name change. Okay? Okay. Yes, God refers him to Jacob, but there are times he refers to him as Israel. Because God changed Jacob's name to Israel. Okay? So, now the eyes of Israel were dim for age, so that he could not see. And he brought them near unto him. And he kissed him and embraced him. And Israel said unto Joseph, I had not thought to see thy face. And lo, God hath shewed me also thy seed. You know, I kind of wonder if if maybe in a night vision or maybe in a vision of some sort, um, Israel had seen Joseph's, Joseph's sons. By the way, that is possible. You know why? Because you take a look at Saul... In the New Testament, Saul, who then became Paul. Okay, that's another example of a name change. But Saul was blind. And yet, God shows us that he saw a vision of a man named Ananias coming to heal him. So it is possible that someone who's blind can see a vision. Amen? Nothing is impossible with God. <clears throat> now, um, and Israel said unto Joseph, I had not thought to see thy face, and lo, God has showed me also thy seed. And Joseph brought, oh, maybe, maybe I had the wrong idea there. I could be wrong. Don't, don't take my word for things, because I can be wrong at times, okay? Um, and Joseph brought them out from between his knees, and he bowed himself with his face to the earth. And Joseph took them both, Ephraim in his right hand toward Israel's left hand. Okay, you guys, I, I want you guys to pay attention here. Because uh, I think it was today, uh, Pastor Mike, or it, I can't remember if it was today or not, but Pastor Mike had mentioned, oh, maybe it was today, that Pastor Mike had mentioned the significance of the right hand. Okay? There's a significance to that right hand. Because the right hand is where in which we are saved. Where is Jesus standing? He's standing at the right hand of God. Amen. <clears throat> now, I don't know if there's a significance to this, but for some reason, God has it in here. So there must be a reason as to why this is. 
So I want you to pay very close attention to this, okay? Very close attention. And Joseph took them both, Ephraim in his right hand, toward Israel's left hand. And Manasseh in his left hand towards Israel's right hand. So Manasseh ended up being on the right hand and Ephraim ended up being on the left hand of Israel. Okay. And Israel stretched out his right hand. Okay. Check that out. Israel, what hand did he stretch out? It was his right hand. Israel stretched out his right hand. Remember, we are saved by the right hand. Who's out? Who is on God's right hand? Jesus Christ. Amen. We are saved by the right hand. Okay. And Joseph took them. All right, hang on a second. Oh, and Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it upon Ephraim's head, who was the younger. Okay, that's interesting. He goes for the younger, not the oldest. Okay, this ain't the firstborn. He's this is the younger now. Okay, uh, he laid upon Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand upon Manasseh's head, and guiding his hands wittingly, for Manasseh was the firstborn. Okay, and he blessed Joseph and said. God before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac did walk, the God which fed me all my life long unto this day, the angel which redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads and let my name be named um, named on them in the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into multitude in the midst of the earth. And when Joseph saw that his, fa his father laid his right hand upon the head of Ephraim. It displeased him. And he held up his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's hand onto Manasseh. Now, why did, why, did Joseph, why did Joseph try to do this? Joseph tried to do this because he knew that, that Manasseh was the firstborn. But for some reason, okay, God... Uh, it was by faith, okay, by faith, Israel blessed and did what he did in this manner, okay? Let's continue on. And Joseph said unto his father, Not so, my father, for this is the firstborn. Put thy right hand upon his head. And his father refused and said, I know it, my son, I know it. He also shall become a people, and he also <clears throat> shall be great. But truly, his younger brother shall be greater than he. And his, sheep, his seed shall become a multitude of nations. So, we see that by faith, the reason why Israel blessed the younger was because by faith, he knew that the younger should be greater than the older. That is why Israel blessed the younger of his the younger grandson first. Okay? And he blessed them that day, saying, In thee shall Israel bless, saying, God make thee as Ephraim and as Manasseh. And he set Ephraim before Manasseh. And Israel said unto Joseph, Behold, I die, but God shall be with you and bring you again unto the land of your fathers. Moreover, I have given to thee one portion above thy brethren, which I took out of the hand of the Amorite with my sword and with my bow. Okay, now I want to get into uh, chapter 49 because I want to kind of get into uh, a little bit about how uh, right before when Israel dies. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, chapter 49 verse 1. And Jacob called his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may, te that I, that I may tell you that which shall be 
which shall which shall befall you in the last days. Listen. Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Israel spake and was inspired by the by the Holy Ghost. And Israel prophesied over his sons and his grandsons. Think about that. Think about that. That is amazing, isn't it? But with you can't a person cannot truly prophesy according in the scripture without the Holy Ghost. In other words, a person who claims that they can prophesy and doesn't have the uh, Holy Ghost is a false prophet. Now listen, if a person if a person who is filled with the Holy Ghost prophesies, it needs to line up with the Word of God. Why? What does prophesying? What is prophesying? Prophesying is you speaking and preaching the word of God. I am not a prophet. I'm only a prophet in so much as me teaching and preaching the word. That's it. That's it. But I can only do that by the power of the Holy Ghost. I can't do that on my, on my accord. Because if I do it on my accord, without Christ, I'm nothing. Without Christ, I fail. Okay? <clears throat> but Israel prophesied to his sons and his grandsons. Amen? So... And Jacob called on Jake and, and Jacob called on to his sons and said, Gather yourselves together which that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourselves together, and hear ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. Reuben, thou art my firstborn, may uh, my might and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. Unstable as water, thou shalt not exceed, because thou wentst up to thy father's bed, then defilest thou it. He went up he went up to my couch. Simeon and Levi are brethren, instruments of cruelty are in their habitations. O my soul, come not thou into their secret and unto, unto their assembly, mine honour. Be not thou united, for in their anger they slew a man, and in their self-will they digged down a wall. Uh, digged down a wall. Cursed be their anger, for it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob, and scatter them in Israel. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Think about that. Judah, thou art. He whom thy brethren shall praise. Where did Jesus Christ come out of? Which tribe? Judah. Jesus Christ came out of Judah. Didn't he? Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Jesus Christ came out of Judah, and who do we praise? We praise Jesus Christ, and we give him all the honor and glory. He came out of Judah, didn't he? Amen? That's pretty cool, isn't it? Isn't it? <clears throat> thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. L wow! That is amazing! Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. We bow down to Jesus Christ. Why? Because he is God. Jesus Christ is the son of God, but he is God in the flesh. And he came from where? Judah. Didn't he? He came out of Judah. Wow. Judah 
is Alliance Whelp from the prey, from the prey. My son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he couched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him, who shall rouse him up? Who, what, what is Jesus, what is Jesus, uh, who is Jesus in that sense of, of Judah? He is the lion of the tribe. Jesus Christ is the lion of the tribe of who? Judah. Judah is a, is a lion's whelp. Okay? Revelation 5.5. 5. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Praise the Lord. Amen. Listen, Jesus Christ is the only one who is worthy to open the seals of that book. He is the line of the tribe of Judah, and he is the Lamb of God. The lion and the lamb shall lay, to get, lay down together. You know why? Because Jesus Christ is both the Lamb of God, and he is the Lion of the tribe of Judah. You know what? I, okay, I just thought of something. Just, just, just check this with me, okay? Jesus Christ is coming once. No, not once. He's coming twice. Sorry. I, I, it's been a long day. Jesus Christ is coming twice. God speaketh once, yea, twice. The first time Jesus Christ came, he came as a lamb, didn't he? He came as a pure and perfect and unblemished firstling lamb in whom was sacrificed on a cross and was risen again on the third day. But the next time he comes, he's coming as a lion of the tribe of Judah. Why? Because the next time Jesus Christ comes, he's coming as king. The first time he came as a lamb, he came as a, as a little baby innocent lamb. The next time he comes, he's going to come as king what is a lion usually normally referred to as the king of the jungle wow isn't that interesting first time when jesus the first time when jesus came he came as a lion uh, not lion he came as a lamb but the next time he comes he's going to come as a lion. And by the way, when he comes as a lion, he's going to come as a king and he's going to rule for a thousand years. And we have the promise and the assurance that we, we will rule with him as kings and priests with him for a thousand years. Wow. Isn't that cool? I, I don't know. Just That just sort of came to me. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but Think on it, you take what I say, and you match it with this Bible. Amen? You match it with this Bible. <clears throat> Don't take my word for things. Now, the scepter shall not depart from Judah. You know what a scepter is? A scepter is something a king has. I think Israel was predicting, he was prophesying of an everlasting king that will stem from Judah. And who is that? Jesus Christ. Hang on a second. I want to see. Yeah, 
You know what's really interesting? I just typed it in. I just typed in Scepter in the Pure Bible Search software. There is 15 occurrences of the word Scepter. Okay, first occurrence is found in what I just read. Okay, now if we look in the New Testament, the last occurrence that we see is this. Check this out. Hebrews 1.8 But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. That is talking about Jesus Christ. And right here we see Israel prophesying that the scepter shall not depart from Judah. And Jesus Christ is the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Wow, that is amazing, isn't it? That is just amazing. Woo, you just get excited about that. I, get, I know, that excites me. Amen. Let's, we'll continue on. Um, binding his, his uh, foal onto the vine and his ass's colt onto the choice vine, he washed his garments and wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes. His eyes shall be red with wine and his teeth white with milk. Zebulun should dwell at the haven of the sea, and he shall be for a haven of ships, and his border shall be on the Zidian. Issachar is a strong ass couching down between two burdens. And he saw that the rest was good and the land that it was pl pleasant, and bowed his shoulder to bear, and became a servant unto tribute. Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan should, be, Dan should be a serpent by the way, an adder in the path that biteth the horse's heel, so the, that his rider shall fall backward. I have waited for thy salvation, O Lord. Gad, a troop, shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. Out of Asher his bread shall be fat, and he shall yield royal dainties. Naphtali is a hind let loose. He giveth goodly words. Joseph is a fruitful moth, even a fruitful moth by a well, whose branches run over the wall. The archers have sorely grieved him and shot at him and hated him. But his bow abode in strength, and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. From thence is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. Even by, by, the, God of, by the God of thy father, who shall help thee, and be the Almighty, who shall bless thee with blessings of heaven, above blessings of the deep, that lieth under blessings of the breast and of the womb. The blessings of thy father have prevailed above the blessings of my uh, progenitors. I can't pronounce that. I, yeah, please, you gotta, uh, please bear with me and forgive me. There's words I can't even pronounce even. Um, Unto the utmost bound of the everlasting hills, they shall be on the head of Joseph and on the crown of the head of him that was separate from his brethren. Benjamin shall raven. As a wolf in the morning, he shall de devour the prey, and at night he shall divide the spoil. All these, the twelve tribes of Israel, and this is it that their father spake unto them and blessed them, every one according to his blessing, he blessed them. And he charged them and said unto them, I am to be gathered unto my people. Bear me with my fathers in the cave that is in the field of Ephron the Hittite. And then you've got Oh, oh, no, I don't have my sound effects. I can't make any jokes anymore. Oh, not yet, anyways, but now. Uh, anyways, my sound, my phone shut off, so I won't do my sounds. Um, but anyways, is in the field of Ephron the Hittite. Um, in the cave that is in the field of uh, Machpelah, which is before Mamre, in the land of Canaan, which Abraham bought with the field, of Ephron the Hittite for possession of a burying place. There they buried Abraham 
and Sarah his wife, and they buried Isaac and Rebekah his wife, and there I buried Leah. Leah was the ugly sister. Okay. Um, let's see here. What was, uh, I think it was Rachel. Okay. Let's just think of this for a second. Okay. We, see, the Jews rejected their Messiah. The Messiah, okay? They rejected him. So God came over to us Gentiles and then he'll later then go back to Israel. Okay? We have to understand Israel was the first was God's first love. Okay? Cuz he chose them. Okay, we got to remember that. Think of it this way. I heard this from Pastor Mike too. I like this too. Israel is Rachel. We are the ugly sister. So God is here with us now. But eventually, when we go home, when the, when the times of the Gentiles are done, God's going to go back to his first love, to Rachel. Amen? And there's going to be Jews, there will be Jews that will be saved. Amen? Amen? I don't know. I probably didn't explain that correctly, but other people explain that better than I can ever explain it. But think about that for a second. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the purchase of the field and of the cave that is therein was from the children of Heth. And when Jacob had made an end of commanding his sons, he gathered up his feet into the bed and yielded up the ghost and was gathered unto his people. Amen. Listen, everything that Jacob did that we just read, he did out of faith and he knew his time was coming. Israel knew when his time was coming was about to come to an end. And he prophesied he worshipped God. He was obedient and he prophesied and he blessed his grandkids and he blessed his kids. And he told each of his kids what was to come upon them. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something. When we read through that, we also see prophecies that I believe that Israel said that leads into the Lord's first coming and even his second coming and his ever and the and our lord's everlasting rule amen that's good isn't it that's really good i i tell you what there there is a lot of meat in the word of god amen there is a lot of good stuff and i'm going to tell you something there's stuff i didn't even i mean i've, I've been through this quite a few times I mean, but that doesn't mean anything, you know. But the thing is, there's a lot of stuff that I didn't even realize. That it just sort, it just all sort of just comes out. I can't help it. Okay, I just can't help it. If things start to come out, it comes out. It just it is it is the way it is. Amen. So I I hope um. Listen, I hope you guys got some, I hope all you guys got something out of this, okay? I hope that that was a blessing. I hope all these videos are a blessing. Um, <clears throat> but listen, I am, I am indeed a man, okay? And I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent right on everything, okay? There are times I'm wrong, okay? There are times I probably said things that I probably shouldn't have. And there are probably time, and, and I'm I'm just a man. I have a flesh, I have a dirty, rotten flesh that I just want to get out of one of these days. I want to get out of this dirty, rotten flesh and be in a new body. That's that's all I want, one of these days. But here's the thing: if I go home, I can't do this. Okay, I go home and I get my rewards, whatever I have, whatever I will have. 
and I'm going to be with the Lord forever. Okay, if that's if I go home when the Lord calls me home. I want to go home, but I want to stay here because if I go home, I can't. I won't be able to do this. But if I'm here, I'm able to preach and minister to to all those who I preach and minister to. I can do this if I'm here, but if I'm not here, I can't. Amen. So listen, I'm 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 human. I have my downfalls just as anybody else, and I'm not 100% right. And thank God I'm not. You know why? Because God is the only one who has everything 100% right, and I'm not God. And praise the Lord, I am not God. I don't want to be God. You know why? Because I, I, I'll screw everything up. Don't believe me? Come on over, and I'll show you my laptop. I screwed it up big time. Big league. I screw everything up. I don't want to play God. I don't want to be God. Okay? Jesus Christ is God. I'd rather rely on Him. Amen? But listen, I want you to take everything I said and I want you to compare that with Scripture. If what I say does it match with scripture? Then you listen to God first. Let God be true. And every man a liar. I don't want you taking my th word for things. I want you to be Bereans. I want you to be like, like Sherlock. And figure things out yourself. Figure it out. Don't. I'm not going to spoon feed you. You do your homework. Be like Sherlock. You do the homework. You put two to two together. You connect dots. I don't want you taking my word for things. I want you to do the, I want you to do your homework too. Amen. And if I'm wrong, then I pray and ask the Lord that He will show me and correct me and, and well, I'm wrong. And one of these days I will have to stand and I will have to stand and give an account, whether good or bad, of all the things I've done in this body. But if I am right, I pray and ask that the Lord will show you what I'm talking about. Amen. Listen, really quickly. I want to challenge you guys on something. Believers, let us continue to fight that good fight of faith. Jesus said, if you were, if you, hang on, uh, let's see, children, let me, let me, I don't want to, children of Abraham. Uh, let's see here. Actually, here's a good one. Galatians 3, 7. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. Isn't that something? So if you are, in, if you, if, if you live a life of faith and you, and you are born again and you are a believer, um, you are a child of Abraham. I was not expecting that verse. <laughs> the Lord, I, I just typed in child of, uh, um, children of Abraham, and it just pulled up that. It's amazing. Uh, but really quickly, uh, where is it? I can't find it. I can't find it. Where is it? Uh, I think it's in John. John, maybe? No. Uh, but anyways, I, I can't find it. But basically, Jesus says that if you were the if you were the if you were if you were if you were the children of Abraham, you would have done the works of Abraham. You know what? Let me just works of Abraham. Let me type that in. Works of Abraham. Oh my word, I can't even, I can't. Okay, I found it. John chapter 8 verse 39. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. 
Jesus saith unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. Amen. So, I want you guys to continue that good fight of faith. Amen. And you stay strong and you hang in there. Okay. The Lord loves you and he cares for you. Now, really quickly, if you're watching this and you don't believe, if you don't know that heaven's going to be your home, you can know for sure tonight that heaven will be your home. Okay? If you don't know, see, just because you may be a physical child of Abraham doesn't mean that you are a child of Abraham. Does that make sense? I just read that. Because Jesus said, if you were Abraham's children... Ye would do the works of Abraham. Faith. You could be a literal seed of Abraham, but have no faith. And we see that through Israel's history. A lot of them didn't have faith, even though they were the literal children of Abraham. Amen. So, I want to challenge you. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today is the day of salvation. Do not wait because tomorrow might be too late. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is who he says he is, you will be saved. If you believe that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. All you have to do is sincerely go before the Lord. Admit that you are a sinner. Repent of your sins. Ask him to forgive you, to cleanse you, and to wash, to cleanse and wash you with his blood. Ask him to be the Lord and Savior of your heart and life. Ask Him to fill you with His Spirit. And then to be thank and, and to thank Him for saving you. But most importantly, is being able to put your faith and trust in what He did for you at the cross. It is not complicated. It's simple. The question is, will you take those steps? Will you take those steps in that step? Will you take that step in that right direction? That ye that you might know that that you will know that heaven will be your home. Will you take that step in that direction? Um, that you may that you may know that you will be a child of God, but also a child of Abraham. Amen. Listen, I love you guys. Uh, God bless you. And uh, listen, um, I know that was a lot of information. I probably went off on a lot of rabbit trails, and I apologize. I, I have a habit of doing that, and i got to learn how to stay on topic. Uh, but listen, I love you guys. God bless you. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, tomorrow, um, I don't know, there's, there seems to be a lot of stuff on Catholicism coming out. So if the Lord willing, I might talk about Catholicism tomorrow. Talk about why it is as corrupt as it is. Especially now. And because um, people need to know that Catholicism is not Christian. Catholicism is Babylonian witchcraft. Okay. So if the good Lord, if the Lord wills tomorrow, I'm going to touch on Catholicism tomorrow. And why that is corrupt. I'm going to actually, what I want to do is kind of take some of the stuff that they believe in and prove to you from scripture why that is wrong. Okay, so I want you to pray for me on that. Okay, uh, tomorrow that'll be on past that will be on Pastor Brandon live tomorrow. Okay, so I want you guys to stay tuned for that. Uh, what else? Um, oh, I want you guys to pray for me on Sun on Sunday. I'm I have the honor and privilege to drive down to the VA center uh, down in Fayetteville. I'm going to be preaching to our veterans. Um, hey, I mean. There's, I, you can't get any better to, the, than to serve those who served in the military, amen. So I'm going to go down there to preach. Um, I'm going to be talking about uh, what we've been discussing here. So I'm going to be actually extending our faith series at the VA because I think that that is something that is a big topic and is something that uh, you know they need. We all need to learn from time to time and be reminded, amen. So pray for me on that. Um, other than that, I, I don't have anything else. Um, and listen, I love you guys, okay? I love you dearly. And, and I'm going to tell you something. There's, I'm, 
there's going to be things I'm not going to be nice about. Okay? There are things that I'm very passionate about. And I'm going to get mean sometimes. I'm not trying to pick on anybody. But I'm not going there's going to be some things I'm not going to be nice about. And if you I mean if you watch Pastor Mike, you know, there's things that he's not nice about. But you know what? He has an obligation and a commandment from our Holy Father, Jesus Christ. And I'm not talking about the Pope. Every preacher, every pastor has a commandment from Jesus Christ to tell the truth as it is. And sometimes we're not going to be nice about it. If you think about it, when you take a look at Jesus Christ, there are things that he wasn't nice about either. You know what he called the Pharisees? He called them vipers. I don't know about you, but when you take a look at uh, someone calling someone a snake, which, by the way, I hate those disgusting, abominable creatures. I wish I had a shotgun and shoot every single one of them. I hate them disgusting creatures. Ugh. Uh, but you, but you take a look at you calling someone a, a snake. Ah, oh, he's such a snake. That's a that's kind of a not not a very pretty thing to say to somebody. You know what I'm saying? And our Lord, he name called. As much as. You may not want to hear that. Our Lord did name call. He called the Pharisees vipers. By the way, even John the Baptist even name called. He called the Pharisees vipers. Oh, bro, 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 you can't talk about that. That's not nice. You can't name call. We need to love everybody. You're right. We need to love one another. But true love does not compromise. And the love... That the American churches are tar talking about is a is a compromised love. It's a backwards love. Those churches are trying to bring a evolution, a revolution. Sorry, is that evolution? Revolution. You know when you take a look at revolution, you have love spelt backwards. We shouldn't compromise what we believe just to love somebody. If we truly love somebody, we would tell them the truth. And we should tell in truth, we should tell the truth in love. But sometimes there are going to be things that you know, we shouldn't be very we, we're not going to be nice on. I liked uh, what Pastor Mike said today, okay? Abortion is a very, is a very, 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 very touchy topic. But Pastor Mike is not going to be nice about it. He's not. Okay, because abortion is murder. And by the way, <clears throat> America is a lot worse than Nazi Germany. Nazi Germany killed, yeah, Nazi Germany killed millions of people. That, that's, that's pretty bad. But it's worse when you have a nation like this killing more people than Nazi Germany had. That is only by abortion alone. There's like 48 million abortions last year. That is way too high of a number. That is an unacceptable number. We should, not, we should not allow abortions in this nation. As a matter of fact, I think we need to have a law that is put in place that says, no, you can't do abortions. You know what's ironic? The hypocrisy in this nation? If somebody takes a weapon and kills another being, they get sentenced to prison for life. But if you are a if you are a person that performs abortions, 
They'll praise you for that. As a matter of fact, they won't even slap your hand if you if you if you perform an abortion. Abortion is murder, people. This nation has violated God's rules. And our nation is in big trouble. Trump can't fix it. What will fix it is if we as a nation get on our knees and repent of our sin. Now I'm going to tell you something. I'm probably not going to be nice about... I'm not going to be nice about the subject... I'm not going to be I'm not going to be nice about the subject either. It needs to be said, abortion is murder. murder. Now listen. That doesn't mean I'm not going to have compassion of those who maybe had an abortion and feel bad about it. Okay? I will have compassion for those who had it and do feel bad. Okay? I listen. I I can't imagine I can't imagine the trauma that that must be going through all those women that had an abortion and, and are troubled by it, I cannot imagine that the trauma that produces them. I feel for those. I feel for all those women that have an abortion and they're traumatized because they feel guilty. They need grace. They need to be loved on. They need to, to know that, that God loves them, that God forgives their sin. But they need to repent of their sin. Okay? But I'm not going to be nice about it either. And there's going to be different topics that I'm not going to be nice about. And one of them is false churches. I'm not going to be nice about that. Because for some reason I have such a passion for damnable heresies leaking into the churches. And churches teaching Damnable heresies deceiving people. I have a passion for that. I do. And I will not be nice about it. Because I think, I, I just, I think that there's, the American church is playing church. And, they're, and because they're playing church, by the way, even, even not telling people the truth is still murder. Lying can be a form of murder. Do you know why? Because if you tell people a lie and they believe it and they're lost, you made them two times the child of hell than you. Even telling a lie is murder. And I'm going to tell you something. If you break one, you break all. Can I get an amen from God's people on that? You break one commandment, you break all. By the way, we can't keep the commandments. This is why Jesus came. It is not. We do works not to be saved. We do works because we are saved. We love him because he first loved us. Amen. Listen, that, that went way on too long. And I don't know why I said that. And But... Maybe that maybe someone needed to hear that. Maybe someone needs to hear that. But anyways, um, I don't even know where I went with that. <laughs> See what I mean? I keep chasing rabbit trails and, and bunny trails. I really shouldn't be doing that. But I was about to close and I didn't do it. And boy, it's 1042. Oh wow. Praise the Lord, right? I got to do I get I, I got the chance to do a video today and I get to do one tomorrow. Praise the Lord. Um, but listen, I love you guys, um, but here's the thing. There's going to be things I'm not going to be nice about. And I'm not trying to pick on anybody, but I, I got to tell it as it is. And if people don't like it, take it up with God. Okay? Take it. If you don't like what I preach, you go tell God. I'll, you tell God that you don't like it. You go tell God. And if I'm wrong, God will deal with me. But if I'm right, he'll deal with you. Okay? But listen, anyways, I want you guys, if you guys can, please stay tuned for tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, we are going to, uh, like I said, I might get into Catholicism tomorrow, get into some doctrines and stuff like that. We'll see. I don't know. Uh, whatever the Lord lays on my heart. Uh, but please pray for me. Um, 
anyways, uh, I hope you guys got something out of that. That's like two messages. Of, I like preached like two messages in one without using the Bible. That's, I, I don't like that. I got to use the Bible because, well, actually, no, I did use the Bible without, for that one. But I like preached like another mini message without using the Bible so much. Oh, I don't know. I'm rambling. See, I'm rambling on and on and on. And sometimes when I get tired or if I get, you know, I, I ramble. And sometimes if I don't know what I'm saying, I ramble. So please forgive me. Just bear with me with my folly a little bit. But listen, um, I love you guys. Good, uh, you guys have a great night. If the Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Um, this is Pastor Brandon. I'm signing off for the evening. God bless you guys. Love you. We'll see you tomorrow. See you. Bye. <laughs>